I can never tell if I'm having a good or bad beard day anymore. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Prime Design. I like their products, I've been using them for years. Yada, 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 I'm biased, all that jazz. And if you make it till the end of this video and then feel compelled to buy one of their products, well, you've been warned and that's on you. In this video, we're gonna kick it old school and we're gonna talk about vans and van life products. I'm gonna show you how I assemble a Prime Design roof rack and ladder for a Sprinter van from start to finish. I'm gonna do this in long form because some of my dear viewers have asked me exactly for this video. Additionally, Prime Design asked me to make this video too, so I felt like a win-win to combine the two and give the people what they want. And as a tertiary benefit, I get to gift my friend the gift of a new rack and ladder free of charge. This makes me feel all warm and tingly inside because he's one of my best friends. He helps me all the time. You know, we gotta support our friends because without them, we wouldn't be where we are. So I feel that making this video is a win-win-win for everybody. And so without further ado, I'm gonna show you how I do it very unconventionally. Grab some popcorn or your favorite snacks, call a friend, get comfortable on the couch. Let's roll, come on. Here's a quick peek at what the rack and ladder look like when they're still in boxes. Some might be curious. I believe that's the rear door ladder and the rest is the roof rack. I've opened these boxes and know that there's some ratchet strap accessories. Yes, Prime Design also makes lots of handy accessories. The real takeaway on this table right here now is that these racks and ladders can ship directly to your house, which is a very beautiful thing because that saves you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in travel and install. Some of the other competitor racks, uh, they want you to drive your van to them so that they can properly install the rack. And with the price of gas these days, that's not cheap. I like opening the big ones first. I wasn't raised with too much impulse control. So I always want the pleasure now. everything unwrapped. So the very first thing that you'll notice is that this rack has been anodized black. So it's been painted black. Five years ago when I was messing around with my personal roof rack, that wasn't an option. So I got chrome and now Prime Design is offering racks that come in the color black. So that's an option. I think that if you go black, it's a little bit of an upcharge because they have to it's an extra step for them. They have to send off parts to get painted. That being said, you now have that as a color preference. I wanna just quickly note that this pile is the crossbar pile that comes with the rack. And these are some extra beefy crossbars that come as an accessory. You have to buy these separately. I highly recommend buying the more beefed up crossbars because that will enable you to put more weight on the roof this holds much less weight. I don't remember from the top of my head how much each one holds, but I do know, I've learned in life, that whenever you can get the beefier one, it's a good idea. See these channels right here? This is Prime Design's gift to the van owner. So every rack system that they make ships with one of these because you can't mount their racks to your vehicle if you don't have any anchor points. And so you need channels in your roof in order for all this to work. And these channels aren't cheap. I think I spent something like 350 bucks on mine. Had I known that Prime Design racks ship with channels, that would have saved me hundreds of dollars. Let us set aside the ladder for now. There's not much to install here, so. I want to do the rack first. That'll do. So that is ten millimeter. Yeah. Step one is to assemble the ribs. It's not a very complicated process. In fact, the instructions just say, 
assemble the ribs. We're basically just gonna take these nuts and bolts and join everything together. The way this works is you take both pieces of rack, line them up, and then you're gonna have these little clamps that have little grooves that fit into specific places, right about there. Same exact process, other side. You're gonna take both parts of the rack, fit them together, and then find these pieces, line up the tabs, make sure alu rack is right side up. See, save myself. The first time I did this, I was very skeptical, but it's pretty darn rigid, especially once you attach all the crossbars. This little plate joins two short pieces of metal, makes them long, one continuous long piece, and it works pretty darn good. Let's see if I can do this without making a lot of ruckus. You have to install a lot of these in the channel, enough rather, not a lot, but enough, so that when you cap both ends of your rack, you have, you have enough mounting points for all your crossbars. So, you know, here you have to stop and do some math and figure out, I'm gonna have eight crossbars X amount of distance apart. And so on every side, you would insert eight of these things for your crossbars. Make sense? Just like so. See this one popped out now. This part is the part that's no fun. It's not hard, but you have to line that up with this. Put the washer right there on the, the bolt and finesse this in. It likes to be difficult. Take your time. This rack is starting to take shape. And I do really like the black color. It looks sleeker. Sleeker than the one that's on my van. Though I do think silver fits with silver, and so I'm not bummed that I didn't get a black one. But if I were to do it again, I would definitely be tempted to go black. And this is about how it's gonna look on the roof of my buddy's vehicle, on his sprinter van. The spacing between the crossbars is very rough currently. Once I know where he wants his crossbars and really adjust them, make them custom to his needs. Final step in constructing the rack is attaching the roller. And that's what I'm gonna do next. We'll take it all the way to the edge. Okay, let's see how this works. Bink. I 
I'd say that's a roller right there. It's very easy to assemble this rack. You don't need any special tools. You don't need any special skills. You just need a couple hours and the will to try something new. And the end result, as you can see, is a very sleek looking, very solid feeling rack. And the obvious next step is to put it on my buddy's van. Oh no, it got me, it really got me. <laughs> Karma is real. Okay, well, we'll get that a little bit later with some goop off. This thing is much easier to install than the rack, to assemble rather. Really all you need to do is attach four of these brackets onto the ladder itself. The ones that come pre-assembled, those are the top, left and right. And the ones that look like some assembly is required, that's gonna be the bottom. They're more adjustable, and so this is what you're gonna do on the van later on. We'll flip the ladder vertically. And then it's a simple process of bolt, lock washer, washer and hole. This can be a little tricky. Not really tricky, I suppose, but it requires a little finesse. You gotta get the bolt in a tight little hole. Sometimes this can test your patience. Okay, that's one. There we go. So these little things up top, this is the top of the ladder, they're gonna slide over your door and just clamp and cinch down and then you'll be able to tighten it right here and right there. And then the bottom works in a similar fashion. So one of my favorite things about this ladder is that you don't have to drill any holes into your Mercedes. That can be a very, very scary thing for many of us. And so wherever we don't have to drill, we like to avoid it. I like to avoid it. The bottom brackets have this weird slider that locks into a channel. And this is gonna be how you finalize the security of your ladder. So once you adjust it to your van, you're gonna be able to cinch it down and lock it down nice and firm. One, two, three, four. For this, you're gonna use hole one and four. And it went from 90 degrees two weeks ago to 37 degrees. We basically skipped fall and went straight from summer to winter. Find the channel, slide this thing in. And we're almost done. The ratchet straps come with an assortment of pieces, just a pile of hardware. I went ahead and assembled one already because I wanted to make sure to get it right on camera. And so this piece, when, it's, when this is done, it's gonna look just like this. And it's gonna enable you to seamlessly integrate straps on top of your alu rack into your crossbars around here. Everything else is self-explanatory. It's a ratchet strap that's gonna enable you to cinch down wood, kayaks, whatever you want on top of your van. So let's assemble it together so you can see the process. Here.
From there, we take these little guys and put them on like so. This is gonna create a little cantilever so that the ratchet is nice and strong against the rack. Last but not least, we have to assemble the clamp that's gonna clamp it all to the rack. And that goes like so. The final product is gonna look something like this. At this point, ratchet, ladder, and rack assembly is complete. And the final step is the most important one, mounting everything to my buddy's vehicle. This is my solution for getting the rack on my buddy's van. When Willie comes over tomorrow, we're gonna use that tree branch and this pulley to gently hoist the black roof rack onto the van. And so today, I'm gonna go set this up on the roof of my van using my prime design ladder. While we're on the roof of my van, I just want to point out that this is a very sturdy rack. I've had five or six full grown adults standing up here. So, you know, 200 and let's say 200 pounds a piece. That's roughly a thousand pounds. Now I want to be clear that that's not prime design speaking, that's Sergey speaking. So no lawsuits, please. But the point being is that this rack is very, very solid. Nothing about the Sprinter van is square. I think you'd agree with that too. And because this ladder is so incredibly adjustable, it's very easy to get mental about it and start really wanting to achieve symmetry. The easiest way I found to keep it looking straight is to line the ladder up with these, this edge of the door. That's the straightest line on a Sprinter van door. Oops. We're really gonna be tweaking the left side of the ladder and then finalizing the adjustment with the right side of the ladder. These are the bottom clamps. They're much more adjustable than the top. And so how this is gonna work is we're gonna open the door. Fish these guys in. And just use finesse in order to pinch the lip about like so here's a close-up peek of the bottom clamps they literally just grab the bottom of the door and up top same sort of story. So before you affix your ladder all the way, make sure that it locks in its open, open position. Here, let me show you. So when you're placing the ladder, make sure that this thing, this little magnetic mount right here, that thing, make sure there's enough clearance so that the ladder doesn't hit your van. It's a cool system. This nut, it helps tighten everything down, really give it a good grip on the door. And once you've tightened it to your satisfaction, you can come through and tighten these two nuts 
and then it cinches everything down in position and then you can actually pull this thing out so that nobody can mess with proper fit. Once these two bolts are cinched exactly where you want them, you could get rid of this thing entirely. It's no longer needed. The reason I like mounting the ladder first is because it gives me another way to climb to the roof. So when we actually move to the rack, that'll make our job that much easier. I'd say that's pretty solid. Okay, Bubba. Oh man. Give it a pull. I mean, that's pretty stout, man. I mean, that's pretty stout. I'm going to tie it to the shipping container so that we don't have to hold it. Yeah. Uh, go a little left, 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 left. You're going to scrape the tree. Yep. Just like that. A little bit more. A little bit more. I like that right there. And now just let it drop a little. That's looking pretty good. Here, let me get the clips. So the first thing we're gonna do is slide a bunch of these into the roof rails, the factory roof rails on Willy Sprinter. And those are gonna give us mounting points for the braces. This is the part that actually holds the rack on the roof. Prime Design makes two versions of this the light duty version, which is what I'm holding. This is also the, the low profile version. So if you don't want your rack to whistle as much, if you just wanna have a low tight rack, you'd use this clamp. And they also make a more beefed up heavy duty clamp. So if you're gonna be hauling a lot more weight, then maybe go after that one. Last one. Yoga. <laughs> I can't get it over there, Mario. Bring it over here. <laughs> Leave them kind of loose. You'll do all your final adjustments later. Mari, watch out. And I can still raise and fall. Okay, you just tell me what. That's pretty good, yeah. Just fall it down. And we will. Figure it out. You mind if I gingerly walk? No, I don't give a fuck. Can you get the, does the middle one have to? Uh-huh. Do you want your middle to be this one or that one? Whatever's easiest. You need a 
a screwdriver. Mm -mm. Come on, baby. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to fit this thing, this thing onto this thing. Looks pretty good. I definitely think the rack could go that way. That way, okay. Yeah. Now it looks to me that it's this far, too far this way. I mean. Like now it needs to come this way, I think, a little. A little. Just a little. That lean is getting us here. Let me get up Well, there. you know what? Let me untie it, and then we'll reposition it where it's flat. Oh, that's probably a. That's a better idea. Probably a better idea. Here you go. Okay, so now it's, it's easier, right? That needs to go this way a little, right? And this. Needs to go there. I want to line that up with the, this bolt. Okay, so now it slides that way, right? And it also slides, cool. That's looking like it's getting straighter. Ideally, we could, we would figure out exactly where it needs to go and just start tightening it. See that now as it moves, it's moving more uniform, which is good. And then see that one, that one's good. That moved and this one, didn't move that one kind of stayed the same uh-huh so you want to kick this one over now there you go see that looks much more, much more, much more. uniform yeah, i mean that's it that's it i like it so now we just cinch everything I just want you to double check that all of these footings grabbed the crossbar. That if you can see good. them. That looks good. That one's, that one's good. I'll do rack. And now I'm walking on the crossbars and I'm no longer standing on Willie's roof. 
And you can see there's my silver alu rack. And here's the black one. Okay, this is the part that's it helps to have a friend. So you're just gonna set it and I can't see it. This plastic piece is like a little cantilever thing. Mm -hmm. So we want it as far in as we can. Okay. Good. Yeah, give it a ratchet. He's reeling me in. Uh oh, plastic we'll on this one because that foot's in the way. Loosen it a little bit more. Loosey goosey. There you have it, folks. Two vans, two different colors. And now you can see what the black rack and ladder look like versus the silver. I think that looks really dope, dude, with the pebble gray. Oh, it's insane. It just kind of trims out the roof and makes it all match. Yeah. Tires, trim, yeah. everything. I mean, wait till I roll in and get the back to black on that black trim in there. Versus the silver, which I think matches my van okay. It's kind of a classic look. Yours looks more mean and like, uh, like you're part of a militia. <laughs> and mine looks like if Mr. Rogers had a sprinter van. Door opens. The ladder's on your door and it still enables you to open it. Now you have to be careful because when you open the side door, it's gonna run into the ladder if you're not careful. So once your ladder is on the back door, you have to constantly remind yourself, I'm telling you, Willie, as well as my YouTube audience, now you have to watch out how hard you slam your side door. Because if that door's open and you open your side door fully, mm -hmm. you're gonna hit the, the ladder. And then we're gonna climb up. And that's the end product. I think Willie's gonna put some sort of decking on here. I hear maybe aluminum. Steel. Steel. I have a plastic pallet that I filleted on my roof for decking. I have a video about that as well, which I'll link down below. You know, this thing is solid, as is that. And just like that, we've arrived. You've made it to the end. I commend you, you have an amazing attention span and I'm very, very grateful that you stuck with me till the end. What is your reward? Well, your reward is that I get to talk to you a little bit more and give you glimpse, a little glimpse inside my life. I'm gonna share my world with you. And the biggest thing that's happened recently is I've rearranged my studio completely so as to be a little bit more professional about this whole YouTube thing and also to be more efficient. Two years ago, my wife and I bought a farm. That's a full-time job in and of itself. I'm training a dog, you know, I'm trying to be a good husband. There's less time in the day to film. And so I figured I'm gonna be more efficient instead of wasting time. And so I've set up some lights here, a light there, microphone, camera, more lights back there. 
And so when I need to say something to you, my audience, I can just come in here, punch a couple buttons, and be rolling in, a, in minutes instead of hours. I think that's a beautiful thing. Additionally, I'd like to ask for your feedback. I wanna know what you think about these long form conversations. Are they helpful? Are you finding that you learn stuff? Am I keeping your attention? Or are they boring and a waste of time? Let me know in the comments below. You will be influencing this channel directly. That's it, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos that are just like this, but completely different, subscribe to my channel, Butenko Films.